and welcome to the Mumversation Club, the podcast born out of the idea that every mum needs a tribe. I'm Claire Strong. And I'm Christina Streckmeyer. We're two moms just like you navigating the chaotic, challenging, and often isolating world of motherhood. Now, it's said that it takes a village to raise a child, but we want to know where the F is that village? Yep, it's a question that resonates with so many of us who find ourselves raising children, managing careers, and trying to maintain our own identities, often with a sense of isolation. But we're here to remind you that you're not alone. The Mumversation Club is your village, a place where you feel valued, appreciated, and understood. We believe that by sharing our own experiences, successes, and struggles, we can create a virtual village for all you amazing mamas out there. Join us every week for some real, raw, and relatable discussions about all aspects of being a mum, including the stuff you just can't talk about with anyone else. So if you've ever asked yourself, where the F is the village, then you found your tribe. Let's get into it. Hey, Claire. Hi, Christina. How was your week? (laughs) Oh, man. This week. What did I do this week? It's hard to remember. Do you ever get that question from people when you go, what was yesterday? Yeah. (laughs) What what is time? What is everything? Um, This week, I did do something. I I did something. (laughs) Um, I, yesterday, I went through my little one, my uh, my little Rennie, who is so, so like growing up into a little toddler. I went through her clothes and I had to um, get rid of a lot of things that don't fit her anymore. And it made me so sad. Oh, yeah, I still, they grew up too they fast. Do, and I still remember some of the baby clothes that my girls wore. Like I remember Eva used to have this lovely little gray dress and it was so big for her when she was first born. It was huge on her. And then she grew into it and she seemed to wear it for about six months. And I still remember that dress so vividly. It's funny, isn't oh. it? Did you keep it? You know, I think my mom's got it. My mom's kind of good with stuff like that. She's pretty sentimental. So I think she has it at her house. But we haven't kept all the baby clothes, yeah. obviously. It's so hard. I feel like with my first, I kept all, like every single yes. item that wasn't like severely torn or like stained. Yeah. I kept everything and I labeled it. And I was thinking, well, if I have another one, like I'll keep these. And then we decided not to have another one. So then I yard sailed everything and got rid of almost everything. But I kept like 10 or less pieces that I just really loved. And I thought, if she has a child and it's a girl, maybe she'll want to put her in her old baby clothes. Like I'll keep these specific items. And later on, we ended up having Rennie because, you know, different partner, different marriage, like and it's so fun to see her in her like big sister's clothes. That's so cute. That's one big advantage of having siblings who are the same sex. Because my girls, you know, handed down Sophia, my eldest, her clothes went down to Eva. And because there's only two years between them, a lot of the clothes were still in yeah. pretty good condition. So yeah, that's a big bonus, actually. It saves you a lot of money. I know, I know. And it does. It does. But we were just going through all the clothes and I have a friend who's having a, a girl and I thought, well, I better go through all these clothes and see like, what exactly am I going to keep? And like, what am I going to um, give to this friend as like hand-me-downs, which is so fun to give to people. And I was going through all these piles yesterday, which is what I did this week. And my husband walks in and he gets this big sad face. His eyes get teary and he's like, this is too sad. I have to leave the room. Oh my gosh. So has that made you think about having another one? Uh, You know, I, we talked about it on a a previous episode and at this point, you know, I, I was really leaning into how wonderful it is in this current space we're in. I really love it. Like, I just really, really enjoy their dynamic, the two girls, our dynamic as a couple, our time. And, you know, never say never, but for now, um, it's probably a no. Um, But, you know, never say never. So there's that box of baby clothes that I'm keeping some stuff just in case maybe one day. I don't know. Okay. How long are you going to keep them? Yeah, we'll see. Have you got like a cutoff? Well, you know what I'm doing is I'm I'm basically keeping one big like medium sized U haul box, right. and it says like baby keepsakes. Okay, and so we're keeping items that were once my my sister in laws or once my husband's, 
and keeping them in the box. Things that were Stella's I'm keeping in the box. And then just really special outfits of Rennie's. Yeah. Like, oh, we did pictures in that outfit. Or, oh, like, that's her first Christmas outfit or something. Like, it's not everything. It's a very condensed version. And there's lots of room in the box to, like, keep things throughout. Okay. Well, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. I'm a big fan. There's this um this blogger I follow on uh, YouTube. I'll have to like remember who she is and like tag her, but yeah. she says like to designate a space like that, like one box. Okay. Because it forces you to make big decisions. Yes. Because it can only like the rule is it has to fit in this box. And so if it doesn't, something has to come out. Well, I really like that because I'm the other end of the spectrum where my garage, you can barely <laughs> even get into the garage because there's boxes of stuff. And my husband's like, we need to have a rule. If you haven't used it in the last six months and it's going out. But I'm like, yes, but there are exceptions. There are some of the girls stuff that I feel we need to keep. Absolutely. I hear you. Well, today's topic, it's funny we should mm -hmm. mention like the change of heart is, you know, the reason I have so much more baby clothes in my life is because I, I was remarried and had a new baby. And, you know, there's this family that's different than it was prior and there's new things in the garage. And I know it's the same for you. So today's topic is blended families, like how we came to be in our situation. Yeah, this is going to be a, an interesting one. So let's get into it. Um, I know that we have a lot of listeners who may be going through a divorce or maybe they're look in a situation where they're a single mom, single dad, and they're looking to maybe eventually possibly find love again and maybe possibly blend their family by finding someone who has kids or maybe having kids with another person. So I'm hoping today's topic, we can talk about how our experiences went and then share that information for people to kind of hear how we kind of navigated that. Yeah. So. I'm going to let you go because I've been talking for a minute. I'm going to let Claire go ahead and take over. So Claire, tell us about your blended family, like who's all in it yep. and kind of how it came to be and, and give us the give us the rundown of you. Sure. Okay. So um, my family looks like this. So obviously me, my husband, and then my two girls from my previous marriage. So the interesting dynamic with us is that my husband, Kyle, um, although he's a little older than me, he didn't have kids in his prior marriage. So he was coming to the relationship with no experience of being a, a parent at all. Um, and so yeah. initially when I met him, I thought, oh, maybe that's a good thing because we don't have to negotiate, uh, you know, another set of step siblings or whatever. Um, but then, and, and that is from that point of view, that is good. But then what I underestimated was, you know, the fact that he hadn't been a parent and I had been a parent, you know, for several years at that point, um, he was starting from scratch and he was like learning, you know, basically like a brand new parent because he was, even though the, the girls were not not brand new babies. Um, and so, yeah, so it's it's been a, it's definitely been a learning curve. I think finally, we're starting to settle into this. I mean, it's taken, gosh, several years, honestly. I was going to yeah. say, how old were the girls when your husband, Kyle, came into the picture? Well, I met Kyle, and we'll, we'll talk about this on a different episode, but I met him um, when I was living in France, and he was over there on business, and the girls were babies at that point. Um, Eva would have been a year old, and Sophia would have been three. But we went our separate ways, and I... Um, I was either in France or the UK and he was over here. And so it was only when the girls and I moved over here that we actually started living together as a family. And then the, the thing about that was that it happened pretty quick. So there wasn't that, you know, there was never an opportunity for us to maybe see each other at weekends and introduce the girls slowly because, you know, it was, you know, we moved over here and, he was already here. And so it was, it kind of went fast. It all happened very fast. So you guys had your courtship overseas. You guys had to do like, you know, phone calls, Skype, that kind of stuff, FaceTime. Um, so the girls were like school age, right? When that happened, because you had met him prior and then later on had yeah, but, got like a romantic relationship going yeah, with him. You know, and I, I bet a lot of people are in this situation when and until you are, you know, very sure about that person, you kind of keep the kids out of it. At least I did. Absolutely. And so um, 
and like I say, it was, we kind of went from zero to 10 with regards to the, you know, blending the families as it were. And I think we both underestimated how difficult that was going to be um, for him and well, for all of us, I guess, really. And it is, only, yeah. it is only now that I would say, you know, we've kind of got a bit of a, you know, rhythm and a, and a vibe going. And I think we all, we all know each other pretty well now because we've been living together for several years. Yeah. Are, are, are married now. And so, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. But how about you? What, what, how did you, yeah. how did you kind of get to where you are now? Well, it's interesting that you said that you, you know, Kyle had no kids. And so it kind of brought its own kind of like, oh, well, that's kind of a good thing. And like, you know, you kind of think about how that would feel. When you're a single mom, it is something to consider about um, what type of person you're after. Um, I have one divorced friend who only dates single dads. Oh. Like she will not date you if you've never had kids because of that very like point of like, it being a big jump from being no kids to now yeah. you have like school age or teenage kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of had that in mind. And when I was dating um, after uh, a bit of time after my divorce, um, I was looking for someone who, you know, either had kids, wanted kids, or like, kids were part of their life yeah. plan because I had a kid. Yeah. Like you can't, yeah. That's part of the package. You're like, yeah. I'm a single mom. Yeah. This is the bundle. Yeah, like, yeah you're a bundle. It's nice. You are. Like, <laughs> you are a bundle. Yeah. 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 So um, at the time I was dating um, and, and, and when I had met Alex, Stella was six. Mm-hmm. And uh, my daughter Stella is on the autism spectrum. So not only was I thinking about like, oh, man, I'm not just introducing anyone to my kid. Yeah. Um, I also was like, can the person I'm dating handle yes. when things don't go perfect a hundred percent and like we have a meltdown or we have something that's going on. So um, I had never introduced anyone that I was dating to Stella because in my mind, I thought I'm only going to introduce someone I'm very, very serious yeah. about to her. Yeah. Um, that's a big, big step, bigger it than is. meeting the parents, it bigger is. than, you know, meeting the friends, like it's your kid. Yeah. Um, and you know, I came from a single mom, you know, my mom and dad, um, they are, we'll have to talk about that in another day, but they are a soap opera. And during the course of like my lifetime, they had been married, divorced, separated, remarried, like a lot of stuff. So yeah. And so there was times where my mom was a single mom and my mom wasn't so particular about who she brought. Like I met a lot of boyfriends Okay, and, um, it was pretty upsetting when someone you got attached to, um, stopped being there, yes. like stopped being yes. around. Um, cause you form an attachment to them as well. And they start, you know, becoming a part of your life as a child. And when you're of a certain age, you really can't understand why that person isn't there anymore. Yeah. yeah. So I was really intentional about that. Mm-hmm. And, um, I have been dating Alex for a few months and, I met his mom and he met my parents and like we did all of the other types of like steps. Yes, all the all of the um, other and firsts. It was time to, yeah. Yeah, all the other firsts. And then I, you know, and I was pretty certain about Alex from the get go. Yeah. We we fell hard yeah. very fast. And so um yeah, it was it was always like, okay, well now it's time. And I really put that man through the ringer when he met Stella. Um I was really protective of my own like I don't want my heart to break yes. if things didn't align with the child. Yeah. Um, and I knew that, you know, there might be a time where maybe he does meet her, says it's okay, and then gets into it. And it's very different dating someone with kids when you don't have yes. any. And the, in theory versus like what's actually happening. Yeah. yeah. So I remember um, I kind of put him through a test and I brought – Stella to a park right. that she traditionally has meltdowns at. Oh my god! Um, you purposely did yeah. that. Yeah, I kind of set a little trap. It's not always. It's just often she would, if she was going to have a meltdown, probably at that park. It's very stimulating. Yeah. There's a lot of different layers to yeah. it. Um, there's like a zip line and a tower, and it was like a big park. And I thought, well. If he passes this and she has a meltdown and he's still around, like that's kind of a giant gauntlet I'm throwing down. And of course she did. Like, good job, worker. 
good job working with me. Um, and she had a meltdown and I had to climb the tower um, and get her off the tower. And um, we had quite the upset and we were, you know, doing all of the things that we do and we're calming down from that. And he watched and observed and he obviously didn't like get in there because he's not the parent. Um, but it was interesting to see him. Like I was like, I was kind of feeling him out. Mm. And um, luckily he was up for the challenge and we continued dating and bringing her in. And unlike you with your um, distance, mm. we were drivable. So we did do like weekends, like little trips to kind of get used yeah. to the idea of like, we're at the second location. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then eventually we moved in, which you, you did as well. And um, we moved in when we were, um, before we were engaged, we actually moved in pretty fast. Okay. And um, it, it went really smooth, but there was some hiccups specifically when it comes to like upsets and kind of what to do. And also with my own self of like going from being a single mom with her own space to like cohabitating with a yeah. man again like yeah. you know there are its own things I was used to my like level of control with everything and then it was another person you're cohabitating with yeah did you I, I remember sometimes you know when the girls were kicking off or whatever I would try and I would try and kind of mitigate the situation because I, I didn't want Kyle to kind of see that side of things so I mean I'm comfortable with that situation now but I remember for a while I wasn't yeah yeah I found myself intercepting a yes. lot and trying to kind of get in front of things before yes. it became a thing yes. but then I realized like I'm really doing him a disservice if I do that yeah. because he is like marrying the whole package yeah, yeah, I agree. And, you know, we got engaged pretty soon after I moved in and we decided, oh, well, we're going to spend our lives together. And I thought, well, you know, there are some places where I need to like let him in more. Yes. And to be honest, it took a while. Like it wasn't until maybe the the end of the first year that I was really able to let go of a lot of things and let him come in and step in as like a step parent. Mm -hmm. um, because for a while it was like, this is me and my yeah. kid. And like, yeah. you're, you're part of me, but like, this is my kid. Yeah. And I felt very much like, um, in control of her discipline in control of like what, what gets done, what kind of meal she had, like everything mm -hmm. that had to do with her. I wanted to make sure I kept my hand on yes. it. And it was really, um, hard because he wanted to step in. He was like, I'm here to help. I want to be a part of this situation. This is my family I've married yeah. into. Yeah. And, um, it's hard though, when you've been doing it for a long time alone. And even in my past marriage, I felt like I had been doing it alone. Like I was what they call on TikTok, a, um, a married single mother yeah. because I had a partner in the house, but like all of the major responsibilities were still in yeah, my hands. That was like my situation. Okay. So I'm interested to know how you like divvy up the for example, discipline aspect of things. So does Alex parent yeah. Stella like her, her, her dad? I mean, like, how does that, how does that work? Yeah. Well, it shifted. Okay. It shifted a lot. So when Alex met her, she was six. She's now nine, almost 10. Yeah. And so a lot of formative years have gone by. Like those are very big years in a child's life. And, um, you know, we didn't push it, but she has over the years, we began to call him dad. Yeah. Um, and she also uses dad for her, her father and, um, kind of interchangeably. It's funny because her father's name is George yeah. and my husband's name is Alex. So sometimes she'll say like daddy, Alex and daddy, oh, George, sometimes yeah. she'll just call him. She calls Alex daddy or dad. And then sometimes she just calls him Alex, but she does the same thing to her dad, George. She'll say like, Hey, George. <laughs> So she was kind of like, whatever, spur of the moment decision. But I found that when I was pregnant with my second yeah. child, um, it, I kind of needed the help when it came to like some of the discipline stuff, some of the um, pickups, drop offs, yeah. like some of that stuff because of my physical limitations. Mm -hmm. And so I started letting him in more and more. And since my daughter has been born really um he's kind of taken over a lot of stuff when it comes to Stella really um yeah like morning drop-offs like I'll do them sometimes well especially when he's in like a planting or harvest season 
But usually that's like daddy and Stella time. Like she does, they have a special bond and she listens to him more than she listens to me, to be honest. Yeah. I'm still the person when she's upset that it's mom needs to come in and comfort. And I'm still there for a lot of things as like the preferred person. But I'm that for Benny too. Like I think it's a a typical mom dad relationship that we've, we've grown into. That's really interesting. Yeah, so that's that's there. And, you know, um, we're really close to um, Stella's father, and we um, have him as a part of our lives. And so it is helpful that, like, we're very clear that, like, Stella has two dads. It's funny because we're teaching Rennie about mom, dad, Stella, like the names. Yeah. And Stella will often say, you have one dad. I have two dads. Oh, like, so cute. She'll remind her. Oh, my gosh. That is funny. And what about, um, yeah. okay, so what about like the extended family? So I know that, you know, you, you're you very close with Alex's mom because she has a lot, she's very involved with your family unit. Um, yeah. How did she receive Stella and how is her relationship with Stella different to your baby with Alex, who is biologically her like blood grandchild, if you like? Oh my gosh, such a good question. You know, one thing I can say about Alex's family is they are super welcoming. And when I had just Stella, um, and there was no, like, we didn't know if we were going to have another, like, child or something, um, they were super excited about having, like, another grand, she was excited to have another granddaughter. Uh... And my sister-in-law was really excited to have, like, another little girl to shop for. Uh... And um, they would often buy like matching clothes for my niece and for Stella to have matching days. And like they would include her with certain things and um, they really just stepped in. Like it was very much like a Mm non-issue. And now it's like, yeah, Alex has two kids. And to be honest, I mean, that is the vibe because when we go out in public, um, Stella looks like me. And so people just assume that we're a family of like four and that that's what's going on. It's not super obvious that we're blended. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we have the standard treatment. What about you? Like, how are, how are things with your side of the, the, the woods there? Like, how did that go when they first introduced the girls to the extended family? Yeah. So again, Cal's family have been really, really welcoming. So his parents live in Oklahoma, so they're not near to us in location. Um, and because Kyle's an only child and he had never had kids, his mom in particular, I think was desperate for, for grandchildren. And so, um, they've actually been really good grandparents to the girls. Uh, they call them, the funniest thing is they call my mother-in-law, Sally, they call her Mimi and they call, uh, they call my father-in-law, Steve, they call him Lord Steve. It's, oh, it's kind of a, I'll tell you why that came about because he was joking. He thought it would sound really funny if they called him like, um, uh, an, you know, a, a name that would be an aristocracy name in England. So like a Lord or a, <laughs> or a, you know, Duke or whatever. And, um, yeah. and so he'd given them some options as a joke and they were like, Oh, we like Lord Steve. So they actually call him Lord Steve. So that's pretty funny. Oh my gosh. That's so yeah, funny. So it's not granddad or grandpa or whatever. It's Lord Steve. It's Lord yeah. Steve. Uh, so oh, that's, that's really cute. But yeah, so I, I really can't praise my mother-in-law particularly enough because she's been very welcoming to the girls. She you know, sends them, uh you know cute little things in the in the post like at easter time or valentine's and you know spoils them on their birthdays and stuff so they've actually been great um we don't get to see them as much as we would like because of the distance um yeah but that side of things has gone really well actually and so they've gained two really nice grandparents in my mother and father-in-law so that's good Oh, I love yeah. that. Well, you know what's funny you said about like the family in the distance. I don't know if I've shared this with you or talked about it on here, but I kind of accidentally um, married a man from the same county as my ex-husband. Oh. And so wow. have I ever shared that with no, you? you haven't. Huh. So I met my, um, my ex-husband and I met in co- when I was in college and we were both working at this retail space. Uh-huh. And I had been working there through college and that was like his main job. And so we, we got together that away. And, um, that was in a town, like a college town. That's a couple hours away. Uh And after college, you know, we moved to the town that Alex met me in and that's like way a distance. Um, and he was from where I live right now. That's so funny. 
Oh my God. And then when, yeah, I know. And then when we, when I was in the town we'd moved to, um, uh, it, it's in Northern California. Um, Alex was here obviously. And I had my like settings on my dating app to be a certain like area. Uh-huh. And he happened to be driving past that area with his app You're open. Kidding. Yeah. And he like found my profile and like, that's how we matched. And then I was like, when I, when I came to see him for the first time, I went, You've got to be joking me. He lives in the same town as my ex-husband's from. That's crazy. What and um, so my so my ex-husband's family lives here. Like, so when we go trick-or-treating with Stella, um, we go by his aunt and uncle's house and, like, his mom's house. And, like, we see That's everyone so all of the time. So like, are you still... At the grocery store, oh like, God. everywhere. So are you close with your ex's side of the family then? You know, his, um, his mom is just not the type to be close with, like she's just kind of standoffish and he doesn't really have a good relationship with his father. Um, so I, I, we're like friendly, but like, we don't see her often. Neither does he, like he doesn't interact with his mother very much. Um, I am very friendly though with his aunt, like his aunt and I have, um, his aunt has a son that's on the spectrum. And so we talk a lot about like um, things in this area that are really good for Stella to utilize. So does does Stella not see her paternal grandparents? Um, no, not really. Uh, I mean, it's it's no. interesting because recently she reached out for some size information to get clothes for Stella. And I responded with the sizing to uh, my ex-husband and I said, but I haven't seen her for two years. Oh gosh, like wow. I... She's welcome to come. I've invited her to every birthday party, all the different things. She just doesn't respond. And so um, that's kind of a her choice thing. And I leave the door open and all, and anytime she's welcome to come, but um, yeah, not really, not really. So it sounds like that you're in a similar situation to me from the point of view that your, um, your in-laws, your mother-in-law has stepped into that grandma role. Yes. Um, And that's the same with me because my situation is very similar um, the girls, like my ex-husband and his side of the family, we don't have any contact with. So, so now the girls have two sets of grandparents, but one of them isn't their paternal grandparent. One of them is the, you know, is, is the new step grandparents, as it were. Um, correct, yeah, yeah, correct. So and and it's the same on both sides for us yeah. because it's just a grandma on my side because my father passed, and then it's just a grandma on Alex's side because his father yeah. passed. And so we both have like just grandma yeah. and then, um, and I have a set of great grandparents that are still around that are very close to us. Oh, they're my grandparents, but they're, they're like Stella's great grandparents. That's so nice. That's so nice that you're, you're lucky enough to have those in, you know, those in your life still. Um, yeah, yeah it's a, it's a very interesting one. And you and I were similar that our husbands now hadn't had kids before they came into our relationships. I would like to hear from, yes. I want to hear from listeners who have had to blend siblings as well, because that's, you know, kids, you know, that the, the mum has and the dad's got kids from a separate relationship. I, I'd like to hear how that's going, because I know that that can be very complex. It can be great and it can be a disaster. So I would love to hear how people navigate yeah. that one. And that brings us to the end of another episode of the Mumversation Club. And if you've enjoyed today's show, which we hope you have, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a review. Your support helps us reach even more moms and build a stronger village. Until next time, bye.